from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hello, everyone. This is Dave Vellante, fresh fresh off the red eye from VMworld 2019, and. What I wanted to do was share with you some analysis that I've done with our friends at ETR, Enterprise Technology Research. We've begun introducing you to some of their data. They have this awesome database, 4,500 uh, a panel, a panel of 4,500 end users, end customers, and they periodically go out and do spending surveys. They've given me access to that spending data. And what I wanted to do, because because you had a number of companies announce this, this quarter. I wanted to do a storage drill down. So Pure announced in late July, Dell just announced yesterday, late August, NetApp was mid-August, HPE was last week, again, late August, and IBM was mid-July. So you have all these companies, some of which are Pure plays, uh, like Pure and NetApp, others are you know, big systems companies. Uh, and, and so, but nonetheless, I wanted to squint through the data and share with you the storage spending snapshot for the second half of 2019. So let's start with the macro. What you heard on the conference calls was some concern about the economy. Uh, there's no question that the tariffs are, are on people's minds, uh, particularly those with, with large exposure, exposure in China. I mean, Dell obviously sells a lot of uh, PCs in China, so they're very much concerned about that. IBM does a lot of business there. Uh, Pure, uh, really 70% of Pure's business roughly is North America, so they're not as exposed. Um, so, but the macro is, probably looks like about 2% GDP growth for the quarter. IDC has the overall tech market growing at 2X GDP. Interestingly, a Gartner analyst told me in May on theCUBE that there is no correlation between GDP and IT spend, which surprised me. Some people disagree with that, but, uh, but that surprised me. But nonetheless, we, we still look at GDP and look at that ratio sometimes. Um, the other macro is component costs. For, for years, for the storage business, the last several years, NAND pricing has been a headwind. Supply has been down, it's kept prices up. It has kept all flash arrays more expensive relative to some of the spinning disk brethren. Something that we thought uh, would attenuate sooner, it finally has. NAND pricing is now a tailwind. So prices are coming down. What that does is it opens up new workloads that were really kind of the domain of, of, of spinning disk before. Big data kind of workloads is an example. Not exclusively big data, but it just opens up more workloads for, for storage companies, particularly flash companies. Um, the other big macro we're seeing is people shifting to subscription models. They want to bring that cloud-like model to the data wherever it lives, on-prem, in a hybrid environment, in a public cloud. Um, and companies, storage companies, are trying to be that, that data management plane across clouds, whether on-prem, and, and that's, a, that's a big deal for a lot of these companies. I'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, so you're seeing this vision of a massively parallel, scalable, distributed system play out where data stays where it lives, edge, on-prem, public cloud, and storage is really a key part of that, obviously, that's where the data lives, but you're not seeing data move across clouds so much. What you are seeing is metadata move and compute move to the data. So that type of architecture is being set up. It's supported uh, by, by architectures, uh, not the least of which are, are all flash. Um, and so I want to get into it now. I want to share with you some data um, on this slide, uh, if you wouldn't mind bringing it up, Alex, on spending momentum. So the title of the slide is Spending Momentum Pure Leads the Storage Pack. So what this shows is the vendor on the left-hand side and it, it essentially looks at the breakdown of the spending survey where ETR asked the, the buyers of the different companies' products, what percent of their spending is going to go toward replacing? Are they going to replace the, the vendor? Are they going to decrease spend? That's the, so the, the bright red is replace, the, the sort of pinkish is decrease the spending, the gray is flat, the sort of evergreen, forest green is increase, and the lime green is add. So if you take the lime green and the forest green, the add and the grow, and you subtract the rest, you get the net score. So the higher the net score, the better. You can see here that Pure Storage has the highest net score by far, 48%. I'll show you some data later that correlates to that when we pull out some of the data from the income statements. Um, so this is a, 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 a the July, 2019 spending intention survey, specifically asking 
relative to the second half, what the spending intentions are. So this looks good for, for Pure. Uh, and again, I'll show you some, some, some income, state, uh, income statement data that really affirms this. Uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise actually was pretty strong in the, in the uh, spending survey, particularly Nimble is growing. Um, HPE overall, the storage business was, it was down a little bit, I think three points, but Nimble was up 28%. So you're seeing some spending activity there. NetApp did not have a great quarter. They were down substantially, I'll show you that in a minute. Um, and, and it looks like they've got some work to do. Dell EMC uh, had a flat quarter. Dell has a, such a huge install base, they're everywhere. Um, and so, uh, and, and everybody wants a piece of their pie. Dell, after the merger, or the acquisition of EMC, their storage share declined. They then bounced back. They had a, a much, much stronger year last year. Um, and, and now it's sort of a dogfight with, with the rest. IBM, IBM is in a major cycle shift. IBM storage business is, is heavily tied to its mainframe business. Its mainframe business was way, way down. Its overall systems business was down, even though power was up a little bit, but the mainframe is what drives the systems business and it drags along a lot of storage. IBM's got a new mainframe announcement that it's got to get out. It's got a new high-end storage announcement that it's got to get out and it's really relying on that. So you can see here from the ETR data, you know, Pure, way out ahead of the pack, continues to gain share, uh, about a little over a thousand uh, respondents to this. So a lot of shared accounts. Uh, by shared accounts, I mean the, the, the number of accounts that that actually have you know, some combination of multiple storage vendors. Um, and, and so they were able to uh, answer this, 1,068 respondents, you know, pure the, the clear winner here. Now, let's put this into context. So the next slide I want to show you is some of the key performance indicators from the June quarter um, off the income statements. So again, you see, I got you know, the vendor, the revenue for the quarter, uh, the year-to-year -year growth for that quarter, uh, relative to last year, the gross margin and the free cash flow, just some of the key performance indicators that I like to look at. So look at Pure, let's, let's go to the third column and look at growth. Pure, 28% growth, Dell, flat, so 0%, uh, for, this is just for storage, this is storage growth. NetApp, um, down 16%, NetApp at a bad quarter, HPE down 3%, IBM down 21% uh, due, due to, the, to, the, to the cycle uh, that I discussed. You can see the revenue, um, Pure growing very, very fast, but you know, from a small base, right? 396 million versus compare that to Dell's 4.2 billion, NetApp's billion plus, HPE almost a billion. You know, IBM, you know, not nearly as large. And then look at the gross margin line. Pure is the industry's leading gross margin at six, uh, just slightly above 69%. Um, Dell is a blended, that asterisk is a blended gross margin. So it includes PCs, servers, services, uh, uh, VMware, everything, and of course storage. So now when Dell was a, pr a public company before it went private, its gross margins were in the high teens. So Dell is in you know, gross margin heaven with, with both EMC and VMware now as part of its portfolio. NetApp, high gross margins at 67%, but that gross margin is largely driven by it, its gross margins from <clears throat> software and maintenance. And so, that's a you know, considerable contributor. Their product gross margins are in the mid-50s. Kind of where I think EMC probably is these days. I and mean, when EMC was a public company, its gross margins were in the mid-60s. Uh, but then, as it, just before it went private, I think it was dipping into the high 50s, as I recall. Um, you see HPE, again, that's a blended gross margin, just roughly around 34%. Uh, I don't have as much visibility on their, their storage gross margins. I would, I would say they are below uh, in my view, what, what EMC and NetApp, well below what NetApp would be. Uh, and then IBM, that's again, blended gross margin, includes hardware, software services, 47.4%. Probably half or more of IBM's business is professional services. And IBM has, of course, a large software business as well. So, and then the free cash flow, you can see Pure crushing it from the standpoint of, of, of gaining share. I mean, way, way ahead of the other market uh, players. But, only 14 million in free cash flow, so coming from a much, much smaller base. However, Pure is purely focused on storage, so their R&D, all their R&D is going into that storage space. Dell, free cash flow, very large, 3.4 billion. That, again, is across the entire company. NetApp, you can see 278 million. HPE, 648 million. 
Great quarter for HPE from a free cash flow standpoint. I think year to date, they're probably 830, 840 million. So big, big quarter for them. And IBM at 2.4 billion. Again, Dell, HPE, IBM, that's across the company, as is the gross margin. Um, so the, the spending data from e ETR really shows us that Pure is strong, as I showed you that, that very high net score, and the intentions look strong. So I would suspect Pure is going to continue to lead in the market share game. I, I don't see that changing. Certainly there's no evidence in the data. I think, I think everybody else is in a sort of a dogfight. Dell holding firm, you know, 0%, you'd like to see a little bit of growth out of that, but I think Dell is actually, you know, Dell's key metric is, are we growing faster than the market? That's, that's their sort of, their a primary criterion uh, uh, and metric for Dell is to grow faster than the overall market because that means you're growing some share. I think Dell's comfortable with that. Dell's gross margins actually were helped this, this quarter by the fact that Dell's server business was down 12%, so it was a higher storage mix. So it so it propped up the, the, the margin a little bit. Um, but, but, but again, generally speaking, it looks like Pure is the market share winner here, uh, but much, much smaller than, than the other guys. HPE, Nimble, very strong, and it, and it shows up in the survey data uh, from ETR, and then IBM just needs to get a new product cycle out. So, We'll come back, we'll take a look at this in, uh, in, in, in January, and see how, you know, what, what it looked like, and you know, we'll continue to follow, obviously, the income statement and the public reporting. Pure Accelerate is coming up next month, um, just in, in mid-September, I have no doubt. You know, Pure has been first in a lot of different areas, right? They were first really all flash array, they're the only all flash array company that ever, that reached escape velocity. They were, they and Nutanix were the first kind of new billion dollar companies that people said would never have a billion dollar company. Pure is a pure play storage company, you know, well over a billion now. You know, they were first with that evergreen model, they made a lot of uh, play there. You know, the first with NVMe, and so on. first with NVIDIA relationships, so Pure likes to be first. I have no doubt it'll accelerate next month down in Austin. Curious that they picked Austin, you know, Dell's backyard. But I have no doubt that they're going to have some other firsts you know, at that show. Cube will be there you know, watching just off of, of VMworld. The other big player here, of course, that I'm not showing is vSAN. vSAN is very, very strong. You know, the, the ETR data shows that, and certainly the, the data from the income statement shows you know, VMware, NSX, their networking products, their software-defined network, and their software-defined storage, the, the, uh, v, the vSAN. Very, very strong. Pat Gelsinger in the Cube, we asked him uh, last week to, to, to take us through sort of some of his big memories. And, and one of them was sort of vSAN, excuse me, one of them was vSAN, and, and the board meeting at, uh, with, with Joe Tucci, who was on the VMware board, really put a lot of pressure on Pat, saying, you can't do this to me. Uh, it's funny, EMC had the shackles on VMware for a number of years, but the shackles are off, and, and vSAN is very, very strong. So, these are some of the things we're keeping an eye on. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, Cube Insights. We'll see you next time.